I've been setting the valve adjustments this week for the 2 litre CU engine I'm building or putting together for uh, the van. Um, unfortunately when I got to number 3 cylinder um, I found what I think is a stuck hydraulic tappet. So that's what we're going to be investigating today, um, stripping down and hopefully fixing. First of all I'll just show you what I found. Come on. Okay, so what I've did is I, I put the engine to top dead centre, uh, compression stroke number one, and I've actually turned it anti-clockwise a couple of times. So if you're not sure about setting the valve timing on your engine, um, I actually did a previous video on the CT, and the procedure's pretty much the same for the two litre as well. So um, we're now at the compression stroke on number three, and you can see on here, I've got a bit of flexibility. So that's actually been set as, as correctly as it should be. This one, there's nothing, it's rock solid. So th this one's been turning uh, one and a half turns. This one as it got to about three quarters of the turn, it actually started compressing the spring. So there was no give in there at all, it's just rock solid. So it's almost acting like a, a solid tappet rather than a, a hydraulic one. Again, when you uh, push the push rod in, there's the sponginess to the the one that's okay. The other one, rock solid, it's not moving anywhere. So when we take the push rod out, we need to make sure it goes back in the same way. Um, so I'm going to keep this laid out in a certain way so it goes back exactly as it came out. Just move the spring out of the way for now. Now hopefully I can go underneath and pull the tube and it can pull through, but as everything's been siliconed in as some previously, oh that came out easier than I thought it would do actually. So it should slide out. I did give it a quick clean earlier but it's still quite a mess. Like I say someone's used silicon sealant on everything, look. not something I'd recommend. Right, I've had a good clean around here. Uh, get as much of the dirt out as I can because you do not want to be getting any dirt in that hole and grit and stuff. So I avoid it at all cost. And to remove the tap it, we're going to use a magnet. Now, once you click onto it, it may take a bit of wiggling up and down before it comes loose. Well, it came out quick, isn't it? Nice and easy. And easy as that. One hydraulic tap it. It's quite fiddly. So once you have the, the little cup out, here's a metal disc. Um, this screwdriver has been ruined because it's now magnetic. So it should lift it out all being well. I'll make sure it goes back the same way.
So looking at all these parts, they actually look in quite good condition. Um, there's no heavy scoring, there's only a slight bit of carbon buildup uh, on the outsides of the, uh, the faces. So I'm going to give them a quick once over with a bit of uh, wire wool just to make sure everything's nice and clean. Um, but the fact it was stuck suggests it's actually this part here. So this is a, a little valve on the end. So in here, within this little housing, um, is a check ball uh, and a spring. So if I push that in the middle, you'll just see it moving up and down. You can see that in there, look. Um, and that sticks. Now it felt a little bit stiffer than that when I first started, so it suggests that actually probably was the issue. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, because I'm not convinced I can take this off without damaging it and making it irreparable, because it looks like it's been crimped on and I don't have a tool to re-crimp that back. So basically what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of uh, air sensor cleaner or EGR valve cleaner, and I'm going to try and squirt it in there to remove any carbon deposits, and then I'm actually going to soak it in some uh, methylated spirits for... Um, an hour or two um, and then we'll come back this evening and then we'll put it all back together again hopefully we should be uh, rocking and rolling make sure there's no metal filings on there so I had this uh, soaking overnight in uh, methylated spirits. I'll be honest with you, it wasn't really necessary. So basically as soon as I cleaned it yesterday with the air sensor cleaner or mass sensor cleaner, whatever you use, um, it, it freed up massively. So it's a lot, lot easier to press now and, uh, and open uh, than it was. And it seems to open a little bit further as well. So I'm pretty convinced that was the, the issue. Um, I did leave it overnight, say in the meths, but it just wasn't necessary. Alright, let's get this back together. You've got a tiny drop in there just to hopefully it'll prime it, but if you put too much in there basically you can't get the plunger down, so hopefully the engine will do a good job of, plunge, of uh, priming itself. Get something pointy again, just touch the check wall at the bottom, the plunger should sink down quite easily. Pop a little bit more in the middle. And avoid the airlocks if I can. Oops, that flips over. Right, hopefully I can push that down and get the clip in at the same time. Just gonna use the end of the socket to push it down. In. Excellent, Mr. Bond. All right, let's go and pop it back in. So, I'm going to use the magnet to uh, hopefully hold and guide it as I go back in, just because I'm struggling with the camera in the way more than anything. I have put a little bit of oil, engine oil, on the on it just to make sure it's got a lubrication there. And I've cleaned everything as best I can around the opening. Okay. The reason I did that is I didn't want the held it with the magnet because I didn't want basically to touch anything around the outside because it's not perfectly clean. I'll probably get shot down for this um, because I know I should have replaced the seals um, and they should have been a good fit and work as intended. However, I haven't got around to doing it unfortunately. Um, so I took it apart yesterday and I want to get it back together again quickly. Um, so what I have done is I've used a very small uh, coating of Blue Islamar, which is a product I use for sealing things around oil. So it's not silicon based um, and I've only put it on the external edge so it shouldn't get in the engine anyway it might just help if there is a ceiling issue there just 
fine with the twist engine block. That's it nicely. Okay, push the tube in. That'll okay. There we go. Okay, a fiddly bit. Spring. So the spring wants to be at the bottom of the push rod tube, so it's basically retaining it. Like that. So it's a bit of a fiddly one. And it sits within the these grooves here. Which holds it in place. Push rods are in the cups. Need to make sure as you push this on, the springs basically stay where they should be at the bottom of the push rod tubes at each side. They want to flick up. Okay, the rocker's on a Type 4, I'm talking up to 11 foot-pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, this is only a little, little nut and shaft I guess. Same time. Might as well. So, as per the previous video for the CC, basically you want to wind them in until just contact. Which since the last video I discovered you can do with your fingers and it's actually a bit more accurate, it's easier to tell. And then half, one, one and a half. And unlike previously, it didn't go solid, so that's a good sign. for doing this I'm getting soaking wet here, and you can see the uh, thunder and lightning in the background. If you don't have the uh, the tappet set correctly, then it won't prime properly. 
so uh, you've got to do that before you start it up. Uh, so hopefully it'll refill the full of oil. We're more or less there. So I will double check those once we're up and running. Uh, just as close as they're going to be for now. And he's turning up. Cheers guys.